Hey guys, welcome to Coding After 30. In next five minutes, I'm gonna show you how easy you could set up an API with Strapi. It's literally a couple of clicks and you're all set. Why this is awesome is because if you're a front-end developer, you're sick and tired of working with dummy data, you wanna have a real API, but you don't wanna jump in into full stack development. Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you how you could get started with Strapi. So let's jump in. By the way, if you're new to this channel, my name is Paul and I talk about switching careers and to web development late in life. So if this is something that interests you, consider subscribing. So what are we gonna to do today? We're going to take a very simple project. It's so simple that I just have it with basic vanilla JS and CodePen. So as you could see here in CodePen, we have a very simple brief example and we have this statically generated HTML that makes this card. What I wanna do is not hard code this, but I wanna generate it from the data that we get from our API. Step one, you just have to get Strapi. The best way to get started, go to strapi.io, click the get started button and all you have to do is just hit this npx action if you don't use yarn either one will work but that's it just copy this link put it in your terminal and the magic will happen we're just gonna call it strappy api nice and easy click enter and let it do its magic now while this is going out there and doing what it needs to do i just want to say that strappy has changed my life because not only it allows me to get up and running quickly it allows me to use either postgres sql or mongodb data database, pretty much anything I want. And if you wanted to, you could hook it up to any front end that you like. You could use React, you could use Vanilla JS, you could use Angular. Why? I don't know, but that's it. And so it is finishing over here already. So let's jump back here to the screen and it's installing all the packages. Once it installs, it will automatically run everything for you and get started. So first it's going to do a build to build your backend user area for you to be able to enter the information and then it's going to run the application in develop mode now by the way if you miss the step or for some reason it doesn't run automatically for you i'm going to show you what to do but let's oh it's done it's going and look how easy it is and boom it's already running look how fast it is now before jumping into here i just want to go back and show you this so what happened if it doesn't run automatically what you want to do is you want to first navigate to your folder which is your strappy API or whatever you named it. Next, you want to run npm run build. It is going to build your backend where you could add the information that we're going to do in just a second. So it usually does this automatically, but if for some reason it didn't, you want to run that command. And once the build is complete, we're going to run npm run develop to run Strapi in develop mode. And it's going to be that easy. I still can't stress. Like I'm so excited about Strapi because it allows you to build things really, really quickly it's much easier to use than firebase especially when you just set it up with the quick settings straight out of the box so now we're going to run npm run develop and it's going to start the application for us we navigate to the screen as you could see here and here all you want to do is just set up your basic uh, user password and let's get started well let me make sure that i entered the correct password here and that's it you have a back end ready to go so what we're going to do we're going to instead of going and looking at everything we're just going to jump right into it they have this section called content builder and here you have all these different types that you could use to create your content so we're going to build one called events and we're going to click continue and for events we're going to have a title add another field then we're going to have a description we're going to make it long text add another field and then we're going to do short text for initials and you could programmatically get initials from a user but right now we're not going to add any users so we're going to do it this way to keep it simple so we just created our content type that's how easy it is and we're just going to save this here and once it saves you're going to see your events in the collection types and now we could add new event we could do my first event for description say hello everyone and then for initials i'm just gonna do pb and 
I'm going to click save. And the most important part, you want to publish this. We pretty much just already set up our API. It's already going. That's how you missed it. What? It was that easy. And we created a simple content entry for our events, which includes the title, description, and our initials. Now I'm going to show you how you could access this through your URL. And this is our API running. And it created a nice endpoint for us automatically called events. Now it says forbidden. Why? Because all the endpoints are private unless you give permission. So let's jump back into Strapi content manager, go all the way into here where it says settings and we're going to hit roles. Actually user permission plugins hit roles here. And we're going to go to public because this is public. And as you could see here, we have our permissions here and this is for our events. This is the fields that we created and we just want to give public access to be able to either find one or to get all of them or get the count. And it shows us these endpoints that we are using. Now we hit save. Let's go back to our local events and let's refresh and notice how we're getting our data in a beautiful JSON format. So the hardest part is done. We just created an API and now we're getting data from our API to be able to populate our blog, our e-commerce store, whatever you like. So you could see by knowing front end very well and using something like Strapi, you could get to be productive and creating and working not only on personal projects, but potentially working on projects for your clients. So let's jump in and see how we could consume this data. So here we are. I just have a simple project in CodePen. And right now we have this HTML that we no longer use. So I'm going to delete it. Why aren't we going to use it? Because we have this div with the root of ID and we're going to use JavaScript to programmatically add those items here. So for brevity of this video, I went and coded the rest of the code, but I won't leave you hanging. I'll go over it with you. So the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that we have our URL and this is where our URL is coming from. So if we go to our local host to double check, I'm going to copy this because this is our endpoint. So we want to make sure that we set our URL, which we're going to hit. So that's good. Next thing we want to do, we want to choose a root node, which is this in our HTML. We have a div with idea of root. That's where we want to add our HTML. So we want to make sure we go ahead and grab it and we're going to save it as root node. Now, what I did here is I pulled that HTML and what I did is created a function that will basically generate this HTML for us. So to show you as an example, we have this function that basically takes the root element that we selected here. And what we do is we map through all the items that we receive. And for every item, we're going to use our template to generate the content. Now, right now, our template has static content, but I could kind of show you it in action by calling this function right away. And we have an array of three items. So it's going to generate three items for us. Now we had one item, it would generate one item. Now we don't want to run this just here because we want to get it and pass the data into it. So I'm going to comment this out and we go to our fetch data function. This is very simple fetch using a sync await. And what we're doing is we are creating a try and catch block just in case something goes wrong. We're going to console out the error. But if things work, the first thing we're doing is we're going to get the response and we're using fetch API. We're passing our URL, which is here that is going to connect to our API. Once we receive the data, Data, we're going to take it and convert it into a JSON format, something we could use. And then what we want to do is we want to pass that data into our render function. So instead of calling our function randomly here, I'm going to call it once this response succeeds. And what we're going to pass inside here is our data. And so what this does is going to take our data and it's going to render it into our front end. Now, the reason we don't see anything is because I now have to call this function here below and voila. Now we have our one item that's exactly coming from the API. And you're probably saying, wait a second, where is the data? I don't see the data just to show to you that I'm not lying. What I'm going to do is I'm going to console log data here. So you guys could see the last step is going to be just to make sure that we could add this data to our template. So notice we have our title, we have our description and our initials. So let's go back to our template here. Now what we're going to do is just destructure this from our data. We have our title, we have our our description and we have our initials. And what I'm going to do is put data like so. And now we're going to insert these items into our HTML. And the coolest thing with template literals is that you could go like this 
and this is going to be our initials then let's see here we want to jump inside here and this is where where's that oh, went too far here this is where it's going to be our title and then here we're going to add our description and as you could see, bam, we're getting our data from where? From our API. We entered our data here in our events and we're able to now have an API. Have, I, I can't believe, I'm, I'm so excited. I can't believe this is how easy it is. It, it's, that's it. We got our data, we're pretty much done. And obviously you could read more on how to use Strapi. You could read the documentation. You could learn more about it, but we just, I don't know how long it took us, maybe one over five minutes, but it was just insane how easily it was to set up Strapi, add some data, and now you have a working API, and now you don't have to have headaches with a backend. You now have easy way to get the data and test your front end applications. So what I do now, because it's just so easy and convenient for 80% of my projects that I do, I just use Strapi. I'm a React developer. I do Next.js. Sometimes I do Gatsby. And instead of like worrying about something complex or trying to figure out Firebase, I just use Strapi. And as you could see, it's really great way for you guys to be able to get data. So let's add more data before we add this video and finish it up here. Let's do second event and I'm gonna just paste lorem here for fun and we're gonna do JP for our initials save and let's go ahead and click publish don't forget if stuff doesn't show up it's probably because you didn't publish and let's add one more event Paul is awesome no you know what you guys you are awesome thank you by the way for tuning in and checking out this video we're gonna put some more lorem here and put pp i don't know not a good initial but we'll just go with it click save and now as you could see here we refresh here notice how we have our two entries i must have forgot to publish of course hit publish button don't forget to publish stuff refresh and as you could see we have our three entries from our own api and you could do whatever you want here i mean just go to strapy documentation i'm gonna make a bunch more videos because i'm so excited excited about it but now we go to our front end application make sure everything is saved so we don't break anything let's hit refresh and this will get our data look my first event hello everyone second event you are awesome look everything all this data is dynamically generated that's being pulled from our api via fetch we're inserting that data into our template here boom and then we're using our string literals and we're passing our data into our application and if you think this was easy with vanilla javascript just imagine how easy it is with react so i want to show you like how to get started quickly and i just want to make lots of different videos using react and strapi to help you build whatever projects you want. So if you guys are excited about this, smash that like button. If you haven't used Strapi at all, give it a shot. I'm not saying stop using other things, but it is the fastest and the easiest way to get started. So I just wanted to make this quick video to introduce you guys to Strapi because I love it. I hope you guys love it too. I know you will. Just give it a try. And with that being said, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next video. And don't forget to subscribe if you like what I do here on this channel. I'll see you guys later.